Hello, hello. For those that know me, I'm the CEO and founder of Inspiring Rare Birds. 26 months ago, I visited my primary school in southwest Sydney in my high school, Picnic Point High School. I filmed 30 girls between the ages of 8 and 17, and amongst other things, I asked them what an entrepreneur is. Can you imagine the answer that I got? Does anyone know what the answer was? Every single one of those girls told me an entrepreneur was a man. And they thought that the business of being in business was a man's job. And that's because the script in their mind was really clear. And that was, I need to go to school, I need to get a job or go to university, get married, have two children, two cars, two dogs, an in-ground swimming pool in a lovely big house, in a fine community, and then all of a sudden, I'll be happy. Well, I decided that was not going to be the case for me or some of the girls in that room. And I started a movement, like I said, 26 months ago. We're now 100, uh, in 130 countries around the world, 13 locations in Australia, 34,500 women in our community, a mentor program, an ambassador reach, access to funding and access to education. But those that know me know I never stop there. And I do things big, and I think big on purpose. And the key there is purpose. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is why are there no or not enough women in ITC? And what are those eight-year-old girls thinking about technology today? Is it skills? Do they need role models? Or do they need both? Who knows the lady on my right? Is there any hands? No. That's Ava Lovelace. And she was the first computer programmer ever in the 18th century. Obviously, she's not alive, and neither is the guy next to her. But we all know that guy, don't we? Who knows this lady on the right? Pip Marlowe, the MD of Microsoft Australia. We all know Elon Musk, don't we? I'm sure we do. These two are clearly alive. Who knows any of these 50 women that use technology and are enabled by technology to build global organisations? Between these 50 women, they've employed 12,500 people, they've raised tens of thousands of dollars for charitable organisations and foundations, they've raised hundreds of millions of dollars in capital, and they've raised billions of dollars in revenue. The largest company is a $3 billion company. The smallest is a social enterprise. But they're all enabled or using technology. They're Gen Xers, they're pioneers, and they're baby boomers. Eight-year-old girls are having trouble relating to them as well. There's a leaky pipe in the ICT industry. Of the women that actually get to the top of their game in ICT globally, 24% of the IT industry currently is occupied by women. Of that, the ones that do actually get to C-suite positions, 75% of those don't have children. That's why they have a pathway to the top. The other reason that they don't get to the top is because at school age, we're now learning that children and girls need to learn how to code. Who has kids that are coding? A few. Coding is not a profession. It's a skill. Coding is not a lifestyle. It's a skill. And girls need to know what to do with coding in order to apply it to a passion or a profession of the future. In your company, in your ICT company or your department, have you ever had an eight-year-old girl walk through your door and show her exactly what everyone does on the floor, including the women? When was the last time you visited the school that you went to and exposed the girls at that school to your career as an ICT professional? Who actually has been back to their school 
and shared their story with the next generation. Thank you for doing that. Please do that every single year. Young people can't be what they can't see. There is a reason that boys become firemen. There is a reason that young girls become teachers and nurses. It's because they can see this. If you take a visit to your school and show them the pathway and the roadmap to get to your career, then perhaps they can be exposed to the opportunities they're not currently exposed to. My call to action next is very, very simple. When you talk to an eight-year-old girl and you talk about technology, please don't ask her what she wants to become when she gets older, but ask her who she wants to become as she grows. A very, very different question. This lady here is a technologist with her child. Now, she knows that working in her career in ICT will break at some point to have that baby. When your employees come into your office and they're interested in technology and they're women, please sit down with them and share a roadmap of their career in the future. Understand that they will have children at some point if they choose to and keep the doors wide open for them when they want to return. There is a reason some of these women are leaving these professions and becoming entrepreneurs, which is great for my movement, by the way. But it's because they can't seek the flexibility that they need after having children and returning to the workplace. Now, the last point I'm going to make is probably a bit polarising, and I think that's the theme of today, so I'm going to put it out there for you. As a serial entrepreneur and a tech entrepreneur, I've often been the only woman in the room. I've often been the only woman at my boardroom table, and I've kind of loved that as well as not liked it at the same time. And I have had experience of sexual harassment in my own business and outside of the business. This is not a man versus woman argument. It's a conversation for all of us to have, for role models to be created and started and thought through and elevated and illuminated and encouraged and acknowledged. But when we work in the IT industry, which is a very sales aggressive industry, I know that people that had behave badly but make a lot of money for the organisation are allowed to stay. I've seen organisations where poor behaviour has been accepted because they're creating the biggest bottom line for the business. And my call to action for you is this. If you do want women who are brilliant at what they do to come and work for your organisation in ICT, there has to be a cultural shift and alignment to the values of your company, where bad behaviour is not going to be accepted, where if bad behaviour is displayed and the person displaying it is the biggest billing person in the company, they are still asked, asked to leave the business from, a, from your values perspective. If we don't do this, the pipeline will stay leaky. Girls in school will not choose career paths in ICT if they cannot have children on that journey as well. My vision at Rare Birds is a million more women entrepreneurs in our community by 2020 and a mission to give every woman globally the opportunity to be an entrepreneur by choice. There's 5.3 million children in Australia under 18. There's 73 million children in the US under 18. And there's a staggering 435 million children in India under 18. And if our nation wants to innovate, create, thrive, grow, create economic and social impact, I think we need the other half of the population to join that journey. Thank you very much.